Hi, hello children. How are you all? Welcome back to my class. Today in this class, we are going to continue our same lesson of maths. That is measurement, weight, measuring time. So, open page number sixty-eight. Page number sixty-eight, chapter number ten, measurement. So, children, in the previous class, you have learnt what is measurement, then units of measurement such as length and weight. isn't it children so today in this class we are going to take one more new topic of this lesson that is volume so open page number 86 first let us know what is this volume means volume is nothing but the amount of space that a object occupies or that is enclosed within a container so that is called the volume or capacity okay volume is nothing but the capacity understood children so volume it is the amount of space that a object occupies or that is enclosed within a container is called volume okay so understand this what is this volume in a better way so here we are having some activity write the names of the containers and their uses in the table here we are having some of the containers can you see here yes so here we we have to write their uses first we have to write their names then we have to write their uses first one is what is this children yes it's a plastic bottle what is the use of the plastic bottle to carry water during journey isn't it next is what is this children yes it's cup and saucer isn't it so we'll write here cup so what is the use of this cup yes what is the use of this cup to drink tea or coffee isn't it so we'll write here to drink tea or coffee okay so here next is third one what is this children this one what is this yes it's a syntax right so we'll write here syntax Okay, what is the use of this syntax? Why why we use this syntax to store water? Very good. So we'll write here to store water. Next one, fourth one. What is this, children? Yes. What is this? It's a gunny bag, isn't it? So we'll write here gunny bag. What is the use of this gunny bag? Why we use this gunny bag to store? to store water no to store grains very good so we'll write here to store grains next what is this children yes fifth one what is this yes it's a bucket why do we need bucket we'll write here bucket okay why do we need bucket what is the use of this bucket to store to store or to carry to carry water isn't it so to carry water or to store water next sixth one what is this children it's a basket what is the use of this basket to keep fruits next what is this children seventh one this is a mud pot what is the use of this mud pot to carry water okay we'll write here first we'll write this basket What is the use of this basket to keep fruits? Next, what is this? This is a mud pot. What is the use of this mud pot to carry water? Isn't it to carry water? Next, eighth one. What is this, children? Yes. What is this? It's a can. What is the use of this can? We'll write here can first. Name of the container is can. What is the use of this such kind of can? Yes, it is used to carry milk. To carry milk. Okay, so here we are having some of the containers and here their uses. Understood, children? Now let's move ahead with another activity which is there on page number eighty-seven. Observe the given pictures. Identify the containers that are numbered. Here we are having some of the containers in this picture. Can you see here? Which is having the numbers? Yes. So.
So the containers are there with the numbers 6, 5, 3, 2, 4, 1. Can you see here? Yes. So here we have to write their names. First one is, where is the number 1 here? What is this children? It's a bucket. Isn't it? Here they have written bucket. Second one. Where is the second one here? What is this children? This is a syntax. So we'll write here. Syntax. Isn't it? Next one. Where is the third one here? Here. He is a third one. So, what is the use of this? Uh, sorry. What is this children? You just take this one third. Okay. So, this is a pot. Okay. We will write pot. Next. Fourth one. So, where is the fourth one here? Here. What is this children? This is a. This is a. Drum. Okay. Which we used to store the water. Okay, or else you can uh, call it as a water tank also, small water tank. Okay, next is, where is the fifth one here? Here, fifth is glass. Next, uh, glass. Next, sixth one is, what is the children's sixth one? It's a watering can. Okay, so this is called watering can. You just write it over here. Okay, so children... Here, you might have observed that all the containers in this picture are used to store liquid items such as water, here, water, tea, coffee, milk. These all are the containers which is used to store the liquid or water. Here, in this picture, you can see all the containers are used to store the liquid items such as water, isn't it? So, we store liquid water according to their volumes. Volume means what? Capacity. Okay. So, see here, this is a glass. Okay. To drink a water, what we use? Either we use a glass or else we can use a Water bottle is on, on a journey, isn't it? But usually we use a glass. We can't take a, uh, this thing, bucket to drink a water. Can we drink the water by using a bucket or the syntax directly? No. We use glass only, isn't it? So that is based on their volume, capacity. Okay, according to the, we store the drinking water. Sorry, we store the water according to their volumes. Not only drinking water, all kind of water. So, we store liquid or water according to their volumes. Liquid in the sense coffee. Can we uh, drink the coffee in this bucket or else in the syntax or in the watering can? No. We use small cup or the mug only. Isn't it? So, we store liquid water according to their volumes or their capacity. Understood children? What do you mean by volume? Okay. Now children, open page number 89. Come to the exercise part, exercise 10.5. Observe the containers given below and answer the questions. So, here we are having some of the containers. Can you see here? Yes, this is syntax, this is jug, this is pot, this is water container, this is water bottle and this is glass. So, here just turn the page. On page number 90, we are having some of the questions. Okay, we have to fill this blank according to these pictures okay so here first one the object of least capacity is the object of least capacity is least in the sense very less the object with the least capacity means very less okay the volume should be very less which it is which object it is children it's a glass which can which is having a very less capacity isn't it so we'll write here glass next the object of very high capacity is, the object of very high capacity is, which is having a very high capacity, which is that? Yes, it's a syntax. We can fill a lots of water in the syntax, isn't it? So, it's having a more volume. So, we'll write here syntax. Next one. The objects having greater capacity than the pot are dash and dash. So, here the objects having greater capacity than the pot. This is a pot. So, the objects having greater capacity than the pot are, this is a pot. So, more than that, syntax and the water container. It is having a more capacity as compared to the pot. So, we will write syntax and water container. So, here you have to write syntax. 
and water container. Water container. Next, objects having capacity more than the bottle and less than the pot are dash and dash. So here the objects. So here the objects having greater. Sorry, objects having capacity more than the bottle, more than this water bottle, and less than the pot, less than the pot, more than water bottle, less than the pot. Which are those? Those both containers, jug and glass, isn't it? So we'll write here jug and glass, jug and glass. Next. Objects having capacity less than the tank and more than the pot. The object having capacity less than the tank, more than the syntax. Sorry, the um, capacity less than the tank and more than the pot. Less than tank and more than the pot. Which is that? Yes, which is that? Here, tank in the sense not a water container. It's a syntax. Okay, tank in the sense syntax. So here, what's the question here? Objects having capacity less than the tank, less than the syntax, and more than the pot. Which is that? More than the pot and less than the syntax. It is water container. So we'll write here water container. Next. Objects having capacity more than the tumbler and less than the mug is. Objects having capacity more than the tumbler. Tumbler is nothing but the glass. Okay, and less than the mug is. Mug is nothing but the jug. Here, here we are having jug. It is nothing but the mug and water bottle. Eh, sorry, glass. Glass is nothing but the tumbler. Okay, so what's the question here? Objects having capacity more than the tumbler means more than the glass and less than the mug or the jug. Which is that? More than glass and less than jug? Yes, it is water bottle. So we'll write here, water bottle. Understood, children? Okay, here you are having some of the activities. Name the different containers used to store drinking water in your house. So here you have tried some of the containers which is used to store the drinking water. For example, pot, jug, then uh, syntax, isn't it? You can write many of these containers which is used in your house to store the water. Okay, here fill the following. Table. So here you are having one more activity which is there on page number ninety one. Containers used to store liquids. Liquids. Containers used to store the liquids such as bottle, plastic bottle. You can take. Then uh, it should be like a bottle. Okay, you can take a plastic bottle or else you can take a this one um, glass bottle. We can store a vinegar and all, right? It is also liquid. So such that you can write some of the containers here. Okay, here containers used to store solid things. Here you just make the solid spelling correct. Okay, yes, O L I D. It is yes, O L I D. Solid things. So here you have to write the solid things. For example, it may be a uh, basket, fruit basket, vegetable basket. Fruit. It is a solid thing. Okay, solid things. So you have to write the name of the containers which. Is which is used to store the solid things. Okay, so children, hope you understood what is volume. Okay, now we'll start with another new topic of this lesson. Okay, time. Open page number ninety one. So children, what is this? What is this? Yes, it's a wall clock. What is the use of this wall clock? It is used to see the Time. It shows you the time, isn't it? So now we are going to study time. So children, first is observe the calendar of 2016 and answer the questions given below. Children, calendar. Have you seen the calendar? Yes. Have you seen the calendar? Yes. See here. Here it is a calendar of 2016. Now we are in 2020. Okay. We'll just refer 2016 time, time uh, calendar. To understand it, what is calendar? Okay, you might have seen the calendar, right, children? So, what is the main purpose of this calendar? Why you use this calendar? 
the main purpose of the calendar is to help us to mark and note the dates on which a particular event has happened isn't it or is going to happen it is commonly practiced that first we write the date then the month finally the year let i will show you how we have to write the date okay so children here we are having some of the questions on page number 91 so after observing this 2016 calendar we have to fill this blank here first is how many sundays are there in the month of may so we we'll refer this 2016 calendar where is the may here january february march april may so here is a may so how many sundays are there in the may here you can see this is sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday so here how many sundays are there which is marked by red ink yes 1 8 15 22 and 29 so 1 2 3 4 5 how many sundays are there five sundays are there so we'll write here five okay next identify the date of the sundays in the month of august so how many sundays are there in the month of august very where is august here here yes how many sundays are there 1 2 3 4 four sundays are there but here they are asking you to date okay so here 7 14 21 28 so we will write this here 7 14 21 and 28 okay next name the months having 31 days so here you have to write the names of the months which is having 31 days so here you can see january is having 31 days see the calendar 31 days february it is 29 so just leave it march 31 then may 31 then this 30 leave it 30 july july is 31 august 31 then october 31 then december 31 so we we'll write all those months here okay so it is so children here you can see i have written january march may july august october december isn't it so these are the months which are having 31 days now children first tell me tell me how many months are there in a year how many months are there in a year yes there are 12 months in a year can you name them can you name them january february march april may june july august september october november and december very good children next question is name the months having 30 days so now let us observe the calendar here now we have to name the months having 30 days so here it is 31 leave it it is 29 leave it 31 30 april june then which month is having 30 days september november okay so we'll write all those months here april june september november okay next name the month having less than 30 days so here you have to write the month which is having less than 30 days so let us observe that calendar here which is having less than 30 days It is thirty one. It is not less than thirty. February. It is having twenty nine days. It is thirty one. Leave it thirty, thirty one, thirty, thirty one, thirty one, thirty, thirty one, thirty, thirty one. So which is that month which is having less than thirty days? It's February. So we write here February. Okay. February. Understood, children. So this is the. one format of a calendar 2016 in the same way you are having the calendar of all the months okay 2020 now we are in the last month of 2020 isn't it so we are having such kind of calendar okay so children can you see here it is federal holidays yes federal holidays 2016 means here there are the month along with the date and the events are there here january 1st new year's day january 18 martin luther king day isn't it in the same way these holidays in the calendar you will find the holidays table there you will find 
that month date with the event okay so the calendar what is the purpose of this calendar the calendar is help us to mark and note the dates on which a particular event has happened or is going to be happen you'll come to know isn't it so it is commonly practiced that first we write the date then the month finally the year so now i will show you how we have to write the date okay we'll take the example as independence day independence day okay children tell me when we celebrate the independence day we celebrate it on 15th of august okay when we got the independence yes we got independence on 15th august 19 47 this is the date this is the month and this is the year so now how we have to write this one in the date format so first we'll write the this is the day well this is the day okay here i will show you how to write 15th august august in the sense we have to write the month so let us count the month january february march april may june july august means 8 okay we'll write this 8 next bar or oh, 1947 this is the year okay so here you can see that children 15 it's a date a 8 is a month and this is a year this is how we have to write the date okay 15th august 1947 15 8 in the sense this is a month okay now children suppose you want to uh, write the date of your friend's birthday okay in your diary how you are going to write to note any important date in the calendar first you have to note down the year for example we'll write the year 1995 or else you can take 2011 okay don't take this one you just take 2011 suppose this is a birth year of your best friend first you have to write the year okay then you have to write the month the month of your friend's birthday it may be one okay we'll write zero one means this is january then you have to write the day okay it may be two so this is a day this is a date this is what this is month and this is year understood children this is how you have to write the important date in the calendar can write in this way in your diary to remember it easily okay to date month and year understood children okay now children come to the page number 94 here you are having some of the activities so by using the calendar of 2020 so by using the calendar of 2020 the recent calendar you have to perform this activity here we are having festivals name here you have to write the date okay here is the month when the festival was there the month you have to write here then you have to write the full date okay here i have done three for you so first one is you can see pongal okay it's a it was celebrated on 15th of january 15th Okay, it is a date, fifteenth of January. Here I have read the exact date, that fifteenth January in the sense, it is the first month of the year, right? January one, two thousand twenty. Second is Shivratri. It was there on twenty first February. Okay, so twenty first two two in the sense January February. So second February twenty uh, first February two thousand twenty. Next Ramzan. Ramzan was there. Is Ramzan was there on twenty fourth May, so twenty fourth May. It is the fifth month of the year, right? May two thousand twenty. So children, in the same way, you just take the calendar of two thousand twenty and fill all these blanks by yourself. In the same way, by using the calendars 
of 2020 here are the same activities there here are the some celebrations are there okay here were the festivals here we are having some of the celebration so by using the calendar of 2020 you have to fill all these boxes okay first is republic day republic day is celebrated on 26 month january week here you have to write the week we are having four weeks okay see here in the calendar you will find four or five weeks okay so here you can see how many weeks are there here Uh, in the february first week second third week fourth week okay usually we'll have four or five weeks okay so here it is there on the fourth week you have to see the date 26 in the sense fourth week day date full date you have right that is 26 january january in the sense it is the first month of the year so 1 2020 in the same way ugadi festival it was celebrated on 25th march it is 25th so it will come on the fourth week 25 3 2020 next eid milad it was celebrated on 30th october that is on fourth week 30 this is a date 11 sorry 10 it's a month october is the 10th month of the year right 10 2020 so children in the same way you just write all this remaining celebrations with their day month week and full date understood children children what is this yes it's a clock isn't it so here there is a one picture of a clock yes so children what is this clock why you use this clock i just i told you yes so it is used for the measuring the time we use it to see the time isn't it so the clock is an instrument used to measure the time so that's why it is called a clock or the watch which we will have on our wrist okay then what is the purpose of this wall clock or the clock to show the time to everyone isn't it so this clock is having two assistants which works continuously here i can see it is having two main assistants okay it is having two hands okay helping hands it is having two helping hands one is bigger one is bigger another one is smaller isn't it so the bigger one shows the minutes so this bigger one shows the minutes whereas see this bigger one shows the minutes and the smaller one shows the shows the hours okay so this bigger one shows the minutes this is called the minute hand that's why it is called minute hand whereas the smaller one it shows the hours so it is called a hours hand or a small hand okay so both of them together help in the showing of the time without the both the assistants the clock has no value isn't it because of this big hand and the small hand we come to know the exact time yes so here children you just observe here in the whole clock there are a 12 equal parts yes there are a 12 equal parts from 1 to 12 there are a 12 equal parts isn't it so each part is shown by a big line can you see here this is a big line here it is there here it is one big line is there here it is there here it is there so all together there are a 12 big lines with the 12 big lines marked using the numbers as one this big line 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 isn't it so they shows the hours this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 what are all these numbers they shows the hours okay there are small lines between two big lines you can see this is one big line this is another big line so between these two big lines there are a small dots or you will in some of the clocks will get the small lines okay here we are having the dots can you see these dots yes so these small dot show the minutes okay so these numbers it shows the hours whereas the small dots between these two big lines it shows the 
minutes if the bigger one crosses all the lines if this bigger one crosses all the lines and finishes one complete round from 12 to 12 or from 1 to 1 crosses all the lines it would have crossed 60 minutes lines see all these lines together it will become 60 minutes 60 lines are there so it means what so this one dot is 1 minute this is 2 minute 3 4 5 1 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay so these all dots together there are 60 lines are there means if the big hand complete the round it would have crossed 60 minutes lines okay so at the same time when this big line is crossing the dots at the same time along with that the smaller the smaller one will cross one big line okay understood children so see here suppose this big line this can you see this one big hand if it finishes one complete round till 12 when this it now it is on 7 then one point is there means here can you see here yes so when this will reach to the 12 and the small one the small hand it will crosses one big line it will it was on 5 so when it crosses all these lines and when it comes to on 12 so this small line it crosses one hour so it will become 5 to 6 means one hour understood children so 60 minutes so 60 minutes is equal to 1 hr so here this 60 minutes because the big uh big hand when it crosses finishes one complete round from 12 to 12 this small hand the so the small hand it crosses 1 hr okay so the 60 minutes is equal to 1 hr 60 minutes is equal to 1 r understood children so every time the bigger hand crosses 60 smaller dots the small hand will move to the next number one if it is this one it is suppose this is on 5 when it reaches to 12 from one round then this will move to one r again when this big hand when it crosses all the small dots when it reaches to the here 12 then this six this small one when when it was there on 6 so it will move to 7 okay so every time the big hand crosses 60 dots or 60 small lines the smaller hand will move to the next r understood children so 60 minutes is equal to 1 r this is how we measure the time now children come to the page number 98 we'll see how to see the time okay first one here just observe this clock children there is a big hand here the big hand is on where it is it is on 12 and small hand is on 1 it is on 1 yes this is 1 2 3 so it is 1 means now it is the time is 1 o clock so this is how we have to read this one the time is 1 o o then apostrophe then clock okay 1 o clock so this is now it is 1 o'clock if the big hand is on 12 always whenever the big hand is on 12 and the small one is on any number means suppose now see here it was on 1 so it is 1 o'clock suppose the big hand is on 12 and the small hand is on 2 means it is now 12 o'clock here in the third clock this big hand is on 12 and the small hand is on 3 means it is 3 o'clock now the big hand is on 12 and the small hand is on 4 means it is 4 o'clock 4 o'clock here the big is on the big hand is on 12 and the small hand is on 5 means it is 5 o'clock understood children so now come to the next page come to the page number 99 children see apart from this only you are having the 1 o'clock 2 o'clock apart from this still we are having the times like 1 like 1:30 2:30 3:30 4:30 5:30 which you are going to study in your higher classes okay so here now come to the page number 99 look at the pictures given below fill in the blanks with the correct time so you are having the clock here you have to write the exact time so children see here. the big hand is on 12 and the small hand is on 7 8 means what is the time now Yes, it's eight o'clock. So we write eight 
O apostrophe clock. Eight o'clock. Next. Now tell me what is the time now, children? The big hand is on twelve and the small hand is on nine. Means what is the time now? Yes, it's nine o'clock. Very good. You learnt it. Good. Next. Now tell me, children, what's the time now? The big hand is on twelve and the small hand is on ten. What's the time now? Yes, it's ten o'clock. So we'll write here ten o'clock. Next, here, children, what's the time here now? The big hand is on twelve and the small hand is on six. Means it is six o'clock. Six o'clock. Understood, children? So, children, now just see here. What's the time here now? What's the time here now? So see here, the small hand. Where is the small hand? It is two. The small small hand is on crossed just one. Yes, it is crossed just one, and it is near to two. It is not exact on the two. It is near to two. Okay, so the time is approximately two o'clock. See, when this big hand reaches to twelve, then it will become exact two o'clock. But here you can see still. The big hand is on ten. It is not reached to the twelve o'clock, isn't it? So means approximately it is two o'clock. Okay, it is not exact. It is approximately. In the same way, here you can see that the small hand has crossed three, but still it is near to three. It is crossed. Here you can see the big hand. It is on one means of course it has crossed the twelve. Twelve in the sense it is exact three o'clock. When the big hand is on twelve means it is two, three o'clock. But it just has crossed the twelve and came on the one means it is approximately three o'clock. Okay, it is not four o'clock. It is approximately three o'clock. Approximately, not exactly. Understood, children? So here they are having some of the. Uh, Exercise. Let us do it. Observe the clock. Fill in the empty blanks with time approximating to the to the nearest hour. Approximating you have to write approximate time. Okay, not exact time. So the approximate time is. So children, here you can see that this the small hand is on. It is not reached to the eleven. Still, it is between ten and eleven. And this big hand is not reached to the twelve. It is near to the twelve. So means what is the time approximate time now? It is eleven o'clock. Okay, it is eleven o'clock. Means it is about to reach. It is not so far from the twelve. This big hand isn't. It is near to the twelve. Means it will become eleven. So it is approximately eleven o'clock here. The approximate time is here. Now tell me what is the approximate time here? See here. It is on just this small hand cross the eleven, but it is not reach the twelve. And this big hand it has crossed the twelve and it is reached the two, isn't it? So what is the approximate time here now? It is see again it has a so far distance to travel this big hand to reach to twelve. Then it will become twelve o'clock, isn't it? So it is now eleven o'clock. Means the approximate time is eleven o'clock. So children, in the same way, try to do this by yourself. Okay. Now, children, come to the page number one hand one. Arrange chronologically. Chronologically is nothing but the sequentially. Okay. See here we are having some of the activity. So here we are having one story. So along with the time, can see here the time is there. Seven thirty, eight thirty, six o'clock, nine o'clock, five thirty, eight thirty. Isn't it? So by studying this activities of the virayas, this is the daily activities of. We are yes, will fill this blanks. Okay, children, listen here. After finishing of this we are yes daily activity, you have to prepare your daily activity in the same way. Okay, so first let us read this daily activities of we are yes. So we are yes is a successful farmer. Every day he wakes up at six o'clock in the morning till seven thirty in the morning. He cleans his cow shed. By eight thirty, he finishes his bath and worship. He takes breakfast at nine o'clock. Then he goes to his farm and works there till one o'clock in the afternoon. He takes his lunch and rests under a tree. At three o'clock, he goes to his garden. 
he completes all his work there and return home at 5:30 in the evening he refreshes he refreshes himself and shares all his experiences with his family at 8:30 in the night he has dinner then he sits outside his house and discusses various topics like rain crops and many other things with his fellow farmers then the tad viraya goes to bed at 10 oh, sorry 10:30 so here by studying viraya's daily activities fill the following blanks for example wake up wakes up at morning 6 o'clock he wakes up at morning 6 o'clock next dash morning 8:30 what he will do at 8:30 where is 8:30 here it is there so by 8:30 he finishes his bath and worship so here you have to write that finishes finishes his bath and worship next dash morning 9 o'clock what he will do at 9 o'clock here is there 9 o'clock so he takes breakfast at 9 o'clock so we'll write here breakfast breakfast works in the field at dash so at what time he works in the field yes at what time he will works in the field and works till 1 o'clock in the afternoon so here 1 o'clock so we'll write here 1 1 o'clock next goes to his garden at dash when he will go to his garden at 3 o'clock he goes to his garden at 3 o'clock so we will write here at 3 o'clock 3 o'clock next dash evening 5:30 what he will do at 5:30 returns home at 5:30 so returns home we will write here returns home next dash night 10:30 what he will do at 10:30 he goes to bed so will write goes to bed so this is the daily activities of ramayas based on the timing at what time he do what okay children so i will give one homework in the same way you just write down your daily activities means at what time at what time what work you will do okay so this is for homework so children in this whole lesson you have learned the units of measurement such as how to measure the length how to measure the weight and how to measure the volume then how to measure the time then you learn that how to arrange your daily activities okay based on the time so you learned how to see the time in a clock isn't it children so hope you understood all the lesson very well okay